thank you guys for the worship. It was great. Yeah, every every day we get more and more people in it. I'm just uh, thankful. That I feel like this is what God is doing, not me, but just uh, just seeing the progression has been amazing. All right. So uh, we're in um, First Corinthians. Um, we're really a popular chapter um, that's quoted at weddings um, and really um, very popular uh, verses that uh, people memorize um, as uh, if they're Christians. So uh, the, the name of this, the title of the sermon is The Greatest Gift. Uh, um, I wanted to start with the intro. The intro is um, recalling uh, this book, my parents, I don't know if your parents ever give you a books to read for SAT preparation or whatnot, but they gave me a book uh, called Trevor's Place. And I was just like, uh, I didn't know what to think of it. And I, as I was reading it, uh, it became one of my favorite books in high school. It was like, uh, like every time I read it, like I would cry. It would like, you know, before there was chicken soup for the soul, like those books, it was, it's kind of like that book. It's, it's, um, it's talking about this kid. I, I just wanted to, um, to give you a description of Wikipedia on him. So Trevor Farrell, he was born in 1972. He's an American citizen who as a young teenager caught the public's eye for his efforts to assist homeless people. He started Trevor's campaign for the homeless in 1983 when he was 11 years old. On December 8, 1983, he watched a news program on street people. This prompted him to ask his parents, Frank and Janet Farrell, how he could help. They drove their son into Philadelphia that night to give him to give bedding to a homeless man who was sleeping on a sidewalk in front of the Union League in Center City. He and his parents later established a homeless shelter called Trevor's Place. His parents also authored a book called Trevor's Place to further to describe the actions uh, thus accompanied with a plea for further actions. It was uh, published in 1985. And then Trevor, Trevor, Trevor Farrell's work was recognized by President Ronald Reagan in the president's 1986 State of the Union Address. And there was also uh, TV uh, uh, dramas that, about it as well with uh, Fred Savage as the, as the actor portraying him. So it kind of gave, for me, it was my first time that I kind of saw somebody, or at least a book or reading about somebody that gave selflessly and he, and he was just 11 years old so I was just like what's wrong with me I <laughs> I don't have the urge to do that but just reading about his life to, to he just saw a need and he's like I, I just want what is there something I can do and then he started off giving uh, bedding to a homeless person really touched my heart at, um, in high school so this this chap this chapter is about love and uh, specifically about agape love, in which we'll talk about that. So let's go to the uh, passage. Just hit the space bar. There we go. Go back. Hit the back arrow. There we go. All right. Let's let's go through the the first part of the passage. Though I speak with tongues of angels, tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clinging symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Prophets, uh, so, okay. So the focus um, of his uh, of his talk here, we just talked about spiritual gifts last week, right? So the spiritual gifts of, of tongues, pro prophecy, uh, administration. He's, so Paul lists all of those things, right? That, uh, that you can ask as a believer in God, uh, in, if it's according to what the Holy Spirit's 
wants to do, he'll give that to you, right? So he says, however, though, so he starts with the though, though, if you, if I have these and have not love, he's saying um, that it's a sounding brass. So sounding, so sounding brass or a clanging cymbal, I mean, by itself, right, if, if, if you just hear loud bang or cymbal without a meaning, without it, corresponding to a musical piece or what or or sometimes it's a you know you you hear the bell when it's time for your class to end or start start right there's a meaning behind that sound um, so without that meaning it's just this noise that kind of is a little jarring and uh, he talks about uh, even if you had the gift of prophecy and you can understand all mysteries and all knowledge so that's that's pretty amazing to understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and you can move mountains like you, like have the faith of Jesus. Jesus, you know, um, told uh, a, a a kind of a plant to wither, and it just withered. Right, that kind of faith, even the faith of Jesus. But if you have not, if you don't have love, he is nothing. And then. Uh, he said, even though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, like Trevor, Trevor, Trevor did this uh, uh, amazing act, like I had said in the introduction. But if, and even though you, you, your body be burned, meaning like you, you were actually um, persecuted for the, for the sake of Christ. But if you didn't have your love, if that wasn't your purpose, it profits you nothing. You, it has no uh, reward. Right. So let's go to the that brings us to our first point. So our first point is agape love brings meaning, purpose, and reward in the kingdom of God. So what's a what's agape love? It's not just love, right? There's we, we under, I think you you've heard sermons before, but it's for people that have not heard it. There's different kinds of love. There's the brother sisterly love, like filial love that that the city of Philadelphia is named after city of brotherly love. There's the love between a husband and wife love. There's a, um, and there's, and then there's um, another, other types of love, but then there's agape love. So agape love is very different in that agape love is a love where there's no reciprocal expectation so you're you're loving somebody without expecting anybody in return right so uh, meaning like so if 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 trevor or anybody like i know like in stan to go, to get into stanford you have to set up a nonprofit organization i don't know if you heard about this but part of it part of the requirements is that if you set up a nonprofit and you bring all this money in but and then then they look at all your all your extracurricular activities and say, hey, yeah, this person con was contributed to society on his grades, on his SAT score, and it's part of getting you into a school like Stanford. So there's people that just do that just to get into Stanford. You know, I, I know this one girl that she wanted to get into Stanford uh, business school, so she went on Peace Corps for two years just to, just to get into Stanford business school, but she didn't get in. So, but you know, there's people that are willing to sacrifice and do these public service works um, to, get, to get something in return, right? But agape love is doing it without expecting anything in return. So, and, and God demonstrated this to us because as human beings, it's very difficult for us to love somebody that doesn't reciprocate. God did this by giving, by giving us Jesus Christ while we, while we were yet sinners, we, we didn't love him, we didn't care about him at all, have no consideration for him, and, and he reached out to love us, and that, that's where agape love started. Agape love started with, Jesus, with God giving Jesus Christ, and then it's easier for us, or we have now the capability to respond to him, right? So that's the kind, now that we've received this agape love, well, now we know what it looks like, we have the potential through the Holy Spirit to love other people and without expecting anything in return. That's really hard as a human being for us to do. And we, unless we've received that, that agape love from 
from God first. All right. Let's go to the next part of the passage. So these are the very famous um, um, verses that are quoted in weddings and in descriptions of love. So let's read this. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. So um, we kind of want to focus on uh, the descriptions of what this love looks like, right? So, um, so it's often quoted in weddings, right? But are these human, these human aspects of love. Uh, are, are training wheels, right? Training wheels for agape love, what, what that's supposed to look like when you're truly loving and giving yourself without expecting anything back in return, right? Not, you, you're, like I said before, like you're, you don't want them to change just because it'll make your life better. Oh, why don't you just change? It'll make my life so much better. No, it's, it's about them changing for their own life to get better. In Christ, and for them to become more like Christ, and then for them to enjoy kind of fellowship in Christ more. So what, what does this look like? So uh, it doesn't envy. So the things that it doesn't do, right? It doesn't parade itself. It's not puffed up. It doesn't behave rudely. It doesn't seek its own. It's not provoked. It doesn't rejoice in iniquity. And it doesn't like iniquity, meaning like rejoice in something bad happening to somebody else, right? That's obvious, that's not love. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never fails. So the, the, the other thing that I like to talk about is that it's saying here that prophecies eventually will go away and tongues will go away too and, and knowledge will have all the, the the reason why these the, it's not like they will completely go away and but when we are glorified when we're in our e e eternity with with god in in heaven right all of these will have we will have no no never there's no need for prophecies anymore we we won't need to uh have tongues to uh communicate with god and each other we'll just have direct communication with god and then all not with with knowledge, that's going to be part of, uh, the exciting part of heaven is there's not gonna be things that you don't know, right? So because of uh, all of these things, uh, these uh, that, um, so a little bit of background, the, the Corinthians thought that, um, that when they had gifts, it was part of separating, we, we talked about separating, um, spiritual people from unspiritual people. And the more you had gifts, you were participating in this new heavenly body like, that you're going to experience in heaven, right? But we talked about this before, that, um, uh, that the gifts were, are utilized by the Holy Spirit to, in his timing to uh, spread the, the gospel. So anyway, that this, this confusion, that the things that they were so emphasizing, like, hey, uh, I can prophesy, this person can speak in tongues, so, but you can't. So they were like, hey, you know, he, he was, he's really uh, combating kind of, that, kind of that, that sense of separation that they were creating. But he's saying that these gifts are, never, are not going to be necessary when we are in our perfected bodies with Christ. So, so we'll go to the second point. So the second point is that Agape love is permanent. So uh, 
the love that you are, um, show people are, is going to endure, endure for eternity. They'll have uh, the memory of that love. So that, that um, uh, even when we have all knowledge and we have kind of everything that was missing and, and an unclear picture of God that, uh, that we had on earth, that love is, the, is essentially the, the character of God that's going to remain, that's going, that we're growing in now, that's going to be, it, that it's a, it's a permanent, uh, it's going to continue to exist. So meaning, so even though knowledge and prophecy doesn't exist, this agape love, this selfless love that uh, that we're de- trying to demonstrate on earth is going to be even in in heaven something that we experience and continue to experience. All right, let's go to the last part. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So so he talks, focuses on the word child, and also the part that he's focusing on is the uh, the maturing aspect of a child. So, so a child eventually he becomes a man, and during that time, uh, that we he 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 experiences he matures. He becomes a more mature human being. In Korea, we call it chardero, right? So, as part of growing from a child to adult, is you mature, you grow in maturity. So he's he's talking about that uh, as. Uh, as part of uh, how we're growing in love. And then he talks about a mirror, right? So so this mirror, uh, this unclear picture that we've talked about, that we, that we know to see about God, see about love, this unclear picture of what love is, Eventually, it's, it becomes more clear, and, it, and then we will see face-to-face what love is. Uh, I don't know if you experienced this, but even after I became a Christian, I, I don't think I understood what love is. Even when I first became, got married or, uh, or became a parent, right? It's you, you don't, you know, there's... Uh, so that unclear picture is is what is exactly is love providing for your kids is love cleaning the house is is you know they they say this happy wife happy life they have this terminology is that what is that what love is just to just to do anything that beats every, everybody's needs keeps them happy you know what what is this love that we're supposed to it, to demonstrate so that it was very unclear, you know. I, I know in terms of the agape love, right? So this love, you begin to, on a day-by-day basis, experience, hey, yeah, that's what love is. Right? Right? That's, you're supposed to um, not expect anything in return. This aspect of not expecting anything in return as a result of your activities, it's very complex and deep because of our, I, I, our, our human tendency to only care about ourselves and, and think about ourselves and provide for ourselves. So understanding that is, 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 is a, it's a mystery that like, as you live Christian life and you mature, you begin to understand more and you go up and down in this, in this love. And then he talks about faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Um, so hope is going to exist in heaven, 
And he's saying faith is also going to exist in heaven. But the greatest of these is love. All right. Let's go to the third point is that it takes maturity or greater revelation to re sorry, to realize agape love is the greatest motivation to live life. So part of what we talked about is this maturity and growing up in this unclear picture of love, this doing things out of a selfless action without expecting anything in return um, is part of uh, maturing, but it's also part of, of a greater revelation. We talked about when you first become a Christian, you're justified, you're, your sins are forgiven, but then you go through the sanctification process of becoming more like Jesus. And, during, and we, we talk about this, during this sanctification process, it's, it, we, in the Methodist church, we talk about a greater revelation, more, more knowing as, as you walk with God, experience um, life with God, we, he reveals more about himself, more about love. So this is part of this growth is, is, is finding your motivation, not in trying to just do everything to get into Stanford or UCLA or USC, you know, trying to, when you get a job, trying to get a raise, trying to, trying not to cause friction in the family, trying, to, you know, you know, th that's, you know, tr trying to, to, to do everything that you can to um, uh, make it, make it a fun experience. That's, you know, that's not the motivation of agape love. The motivation of agape love is thinking about, not just thinking about others and doing, it's about, this aspect of living your life in, no, in, 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 in a way that looks at the needs of others, right? And, and, and working through that and to uh, give as a result of, of their need. And so if you don't do this in love, you get burnt out, right? You're like, why am I doing this? <laughs> They're not giving anything back. They're not. They're not loving me, right? So, if, but so that's the part I, f I feel like is is the what the Holy Spirit does in you is the Holy Spirit changes you, and and that, that, that's the only way that you can do acts out of selfish selflessness, not just the kind of mental exercises. Okay, so let's go to what's the point. So we talked about, all right, um, love, agape loves brings meaning, purpose, and reward in the kingdom of God. It, it is permanent. Uh, it takes maturity and, rev and greater revelation during our sanctification process. But what does that mean for me, John? Uh, uh, and I think the first thing that we can take away is the understanding that and, and thinking of and contemplating that living to attain gifts and things leaves you empty at the end. So why would we want agape love? Ultimately, agape love is what's going to satisfy our souls. When you do things to, to, uh, to like, like I've seen actors that, you know, I think Jeremy Strong, I don't know if you know him, but he's in a, a uh, he among uh, other actors are very, they're struggling and they're trying to become the, they're trying to make it. So they're, they're doing plays, they're doing everything just to make it. And because they think after they make it, they're going to be happy, right? They're going to experience and all of that is going to be worth it once they make it. But uh, after I made it, I still don't see that he's happy and he doesn't and you can see it on his face you can see it in his life he's not he's still not happy even though he's made it to the pinnacle of what he's trying to achieve and that's what you find is yes 
you could have motivations that eventually get you to the place that you want to go, eventually gets you the toys that you want to have in life. But in the end, it leaves you empty as a Christian. The only thing that fulfills is, is, is experiencing this agape love, experiencing and giving, and, and experiencing through giving. So number two is that the agape love that we show others lasts their whole lives. So we may think that, um, I, I remember, I remember um, uh, getting the gifts from people throughout the years or having nice things happening to me, right? Uh, but you find, um, I, I don't know if you find, but if eventually uh, people disappoint you, you know, you, uh, the, the people that you trust betray you, you know, the people that... Uh, you receive these gifts from when it's it's not when when you're not in like the prime of your life or you're not benefiting them or hanging with you is not beneficial they go away so all the nice things that they did it kind of uh it's a, it doesn't last but the agape love are things that some people remember forever so that when you had nothing to give to them like if, like if I had nothing to give to you or offer to you at all, and then you loved me and you, you, you showed that love to me, it, it, it touches a part of your soul that, that you remember for the rest of your life. When I first went to ALC, I remember I was in a really experiencing a really tough time in my life. And it's not like, like okay, when you typically when you know, you go to churches, they're like, oh, well, yeah, he seems like he, you know, he could, he could give offering, he seems like he, um, he could serve the church, he seems bright, he's, you know, is good at business, you, 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 you kind of get measured up into what you can actually provide for, uh, for a group, right? But I remember the, the pastor, Pastor Jonathan, he, he, he really was welcoming to me, and um, he didn't have to be, he gave me a lot of time, uh, and really, didn't just judge the situations that was in and i remember we were at, at a campsite and and he was he was going to vietnam he was he's going to his missions um there and then i rem and we 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 went around and i i told him you know i you know i what i felt from him was what what jesus said right what jesus said to uh to when he was giving in a sermon on uh people that uh, it, that were saved versus people who were not saved. He said, the people that were saved, he says, you clothed me when I was naked. You fed me when I was hungry. You, uh, you cared for me when I, you know, I wasn't uh, lovable, right? And, the, and then the, pe and the, and the people were like, what do you mean, Jesus? I, 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 never, <laughs> I didn't see you. I didn't, you know. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't see you hungry. I would have gave you food if I were seeing you hungry. And he said, "What you did for the least of these, you did for me." And that's what I felt from Pastor Jonathan. As I felt this love that I didn't deserve, or, or I couldn't reciprocate. I had nothing to offer, right? And that's what I, I told him: is uh, is that 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 welcoming, that sense of 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 belonging that he was offering to me, you know, was, uh, you know, this, that's the love that I felt from Jesus too. You know, when, I, I, when I'm at the lowest point in my life, when I feel like I have nothing to offer Jesus, or you're, you know, you're eventually going to have struggles. You're eventually not, you're not going to achieve your dreams. And then you're like, does God still work in my life? Why would he work in my life? You know, when I have nothing to offer him, that's when you feel the love of love of God. That's when you feel the love of Christ, when you have it. Because you have nothing to offer God. He, has, he doesn't need you. He doesn't need what you have to give to him. But he still loves you. He still offers Christ to you. He still wants to work in your life. And that's the love that, that people remember their whole lives. So number three. Uh, maturing as a Christian is shown in the amount of agape love you are able to give. 
So yeah, it's tough, right? Um, you're not, you're, you know, uh, like I said, I, when I saw Trevor's life or other people's life, like I can't do that. I can't, I can't love like that, you know? J Jesus said, what good is it for you if you love those who love you back? He said, love your enemies. Cur love those who curse you, right? It's, re it's really tough when, you know, when, when somebody's like, like, you know, like I was walking my dog and somebody was like, you know, saying like their two cents, like my first reaction wasn't, oh yeah, I love this guy. My first reaction was how dare this person like speak to me like this, you know, why don't he mind his own business, you know, but that's, you know, that's, that's the, that's the challenge that we have. That's where we're fighting kind of our selfish nature, our selfish, sinful nature that only wants to care about ourselves or our own needs. And so, um, you know, that's why it was really tough as I was, that happened this week, and I was just like, man, I'm supposed to give a sermon on love, and, but I can't even love my neighbor, right? And so it's really, it's, re it's really challenging, but I think, you know, he, he kind of spoke to me. Like, I felt like God was saying, you know, yeah, you, you, have, a ch you have a challenge, and this is a struggle, that, but you, you have to fight, you have to fight to, to give that love to others, and part of that is uh, honestly, um, you, you might not be in the mindset. So the part of the mindset is uh, getting into the word of God, doing your quiet time, stop thinking the, the way that, that God wants you to think, then asking God to show you the love, for you, you to realize the agape love that he's showing you through Christ. And that's what's changing your heart to eventually, you can go through those circumstances and demonstrate the agape love that that he gives you and your respect.